हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर आयुषी पालीवाल फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मॉड्यूल डायमैग्नेटिज्म एंड पैरामैग्नेटिज्म फ्रॉम द पेपर फंक्शनल मटेरियल्स द मेन पॉइंट्स व्हिच विल बी कवर्ड इन दिस मॉड्यूल are first the detailed study of diamagnetism and its magnetic susceptibility second paramagnetism and the materials exhibiting the paramagnetisms is discussed variation of susceptibility for paramagnetic material versus temperature is also discussed in this module so students let us start with a brief introduction about this module diamagnetism or the diamagnetic materials are those materials in which the electron motions are such that they produce net zero magnetic moment in the absence of any magnetic field typically these are the atoms with closed or filled outer electronic shells examples of such materials are inert gases hydrogen many metals example silver copper gold etc most non metals example silicon and many organic compounds such as polymers in a paramagnetic material atoms have a permanent and non zero net magnetic moment which is due to the sum of orbital and spin magnetic moments however at room temperature in a paramagnetic material thermal energy causes random distribution of magnetic moments and hence net magnetization appears to be zero for the whole material just not for just an atom upon the application of the field the moments tends to align up in the direction of the field overcoming the thermal barrier and giving a net positive magnetic moment in the direction of applied field the susceptibilities of these materials are very small so in most of the studies only the spin paramagnetism is observed since the electron orbits are essentially coupled to the lattice that is the orbital moments are quenched spin paramagnetism is for example observed in the materials with unfilled d bands diamagnetism let us consider a circular orbit of radius r around an atom with its center coinciding that of the atom now we turn on the magnetic field in its vicinity hence according to faraday's law as the magnetic field changes it generates an electric field by magnetic induction the electric field e tangent to the circular path is given by e multiplied by 2 pi r is equal to minus d phi by dt where phi is equal to 
b multiplied by pi r square or we can say that it is equal to minus mu naught a dh by dt where a is pi r square and b is mu naught h hence the electric field will be equal to minus mu naught r by 2 del h by del t this electric field produces a torque which is nothing but the time derivative of angular momentum that is del j by del t equivalent to minus e capital e r where e e is force which must be equal to the rate of change of angular momentum j that is dj by dt is equal to e r by 2 db by dt multiplied by r 2 minus here cancels each other so that is why we are getting a positive value hence we can write b is equal to mu naught h and the torque expression will come out to be mu naught e r square by 2 del h by del t now integrating the above equation with respect to time with zero field we get delta j is equal to e r square by 2 multiplied by b now putting the value of b is equal to mu naught h delta j will be equal to e r square mu naught h by 2 this expression represents the extra angular momentum provided to the electrons when field is applied now since the motion of an electron is taking place in the orbits the change in the magnetic moment that is delta mu m which is orbital in nature is given by delta mu m is equal to minus e by 2 m delta j which is nothing but it is equal to minus of e square r square by 4 m multiplied by b and putting the value of b is equal to mu naught h delta mu m will be equal to minus of e square r square mu naught by 4 m this whole multiplied by h now for spherically symmetric atoms the average value of r square is 2 by 3 hence putting this value delta mu m will be equal to minus e square r bar square where r bar is the average value mu naught by 6 m this whole multiplied by h so here we have a magnetic moment which is negative in sign to the magnetic field strength because it opposes the applied field this magnetic moment is the moment for one electron so if there are n capital n electrons per unit volume then magnetization capital m is given by capital m is equal to minus n e square r bar square mu naught by 6 m this whole multiplied by h hence the magnetic susceptibility is given by which is nothing but the ratio of m and h then chi m is equal to minus n e square r bar square mu naught by 6 m this equation shows the opposite nature of magnetic susceptibility of the diamagnetic behavior remember that diamagnetism is something 
which is present in all the materials except that many materials also have other effects which completely overshadow the diamagnetic effect. Now students, next we will be discussing about the paramagnetism. Paramagnetism is based on the alignment of existing magnetic moments and the magnetic moment is given by minus g mu b j where j is the total angular momentum which is nothing but the sum of the orbital angular momentum l and the spin momentum s and small g is the Landais g factor which is equal to 2 for electron spin and it is equal to 1 for electron orbital motion. The electron spinning giving rise to paramagnetism is clearly shown in the figure and the electron which is orbiting around, around the nucleus is also depicted. The smallest unit or quantum of the magnetic moment is called as the Bohr magneton which is represented by mu b. Here we will be discussing about the schematic representation of the spins in a paramagnetic solid. When there is no magnetic field applied to a paramagnetic material then the spins or we can say a magnetic dipole they are randomly aligned and hence zero magnetic moment is observed that is we can say when h is equal to zero the magnetic moments are randomly oriented and their net magnetization is zero Upon application of the field, the moments tends to align up in the direction of the field, overcoming the thermal barrier and giving a net positive magnetic moment in the direction of applied field. Hence, when H is greater than zero, then magnetic moments tend to to turn in the field direction counteracted by thermal agitation. Let us now discuss the Huns rule. According to the Huns rule, the electrons will occupy the orbitals in such a way that the ground state is characterized by the maximum value of the total spin allowed by the Pauli's exclusion principle. The maximum value of the orbital angular momentum is constant with the spin momentum S. The total angular momentum J which is given by J is equal to L minus S when the shell is less than half full. J is equal to L plus S when the shell is more than half full. J is equal to S as L is equal to 0 when the shell is just half full. Now let us take an example of manganese. Manganese has 25 electrons. So Mn2 plus will have the configuration as 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d5. Hence, we have the 5 electrons, the valence 5 electrons having the different combinations of L as 2, 1, 0, minus 1 and minus 2. All of them are having spin is equal to half. Hence, the total orbital angular momentum that is capital L will be equal to 0 
and capital S, the spin angular momentum will be equal to 5 by 2. Hence, the summation of the magnetic moments is equal to 0. Now, let us consider the other D group elements. For an example, nickel. Nickel is having an atomic number of 28, having an electronic configuration as 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2 and 3d8. The filling in the partially occupied d orbital is achieved as the first 5 d orbital are completely filled whereas the first 3 d orbitals are completely filled whereas the rest 2 are partially filled. As a result, each nickel atom has a net magnetization of 2 mu b. Exception this may be rare earth elements and their derivatives which have deep line 4f electrons. These are shielded by the other outer electrons from the crystal field and as a result they show both the spin and the orbital paramagnetism. Temperature dependence of magnetic susceptibility for paramagnetic materials. So students, here we will be discussing the Curie's law where it shows that the magnetic susceptibility for a paramagnetic material shows the temperature dependence and it is given by the chi para which is equal to m by h is equal to c by t where c is the Curie's constant. For those materials which undergo an order or disorder transition to ferro or ferrimagnetism at the temperature theta, the susceptibility in the paramagnetic phase follows the generalized Curie Weiss law, which is given by chi is equal to C by T minus Tc. Now, the above derivation assumes that each atom has a magnetic moment mu m whose magnitude is same but direction can be random. Now capital M is equal to n mu m square mu naught h by 3 kt and this chi for para comes out to be n mu m square mu naught by 3 kt which is equal to c by t. Now we are going to derive this expression for m in the preceding sections. Temperature dependence of chi. In this section we will be discussing about the derivation of m to be equal to n mu m square mu naught h by 3 kt. The magnetic energy in a field h would be equal to mu m h is equal to minus mu m h cos alpha where alpha is the angle between the moment and the magnetic field. This can be clearly shown from the figure. Boltzmann statistics in classical thermodynamics gives the probability of a dipole having angle that is of occupying any energy as exponential minus mu m h cos alpha by kt. As a result, you can also notice that it is more plausible to have moment closer to 0 degree than 180 degree with respect to the applied field simply because that leads to smaller energy than those at 
180 degree now according through the figure we consider a smaller number of dipoles that is dn making an angle alpha with respect to the applied field and penetrating an area da as evident from the figure which is proportional to exponential minus mu m h cos alpha by kt considering the unit radius of the sphere that is capital r is equal to 1 the area da can be expressed as da is equal to 2 pi r square sin alpha d alpha hence dn can be expressed as dn will be equal to c multiplied by da multiplied by exponential minus mu m h cos alpha by kt now here we can put the value of da here c is a constant assuming that gamma is equal to mu m h by k t we can integrate the above equation for alpha between 0 to 180 degree which yields the total number of dipoles that is capital n which is the total number of dipoles is equal to 0 to pi integral c multiplied by 2 pi r square sin alpha d alpha exponential minus gamma cos alpha d alpha now the total magnetic moment along the direction of magnetic field can be expressed as the multiplication of number of dipoles multiplied by the magnetic moment of each dipole along the field direction that is mu m cos alpha and is given by m total is equal to integral from 0 to pi mu m cos alpha c 2 pi r square sin alpha d alpha exponential minus mu m h cos alpha by kt now dividing the equation for the total number of dipoles by the total magnetic moment it yields the average magnetization represented by m average now we can show that for reasonably small magnetic field moments are parallel to the applied field at magnetization the total magnetization m can be expressed as capital m is equal to n mu m cot hyperbolic of mu m b by kt minus kt by mu m b and this is equal to n mu m capital l as a function of beta where capital l beta is called as the langevin's function and it is equal to cot hyperbolic beta minus 1 by beta where we can take the beta as mu mb by kt for most cases that is when mu mb is very much less than kt we can assume l beta is equal to beta by 3 using this approximation we can write capital m which is equal to n mu m square b by 3 kt and putting the value of b is equal to mu not h it is equal to n mu m square mu not h by 3 kt hence the chi for paramagnetic materials is equal to m by h which is equal to c by t where c is the curie's constant and it is equal to n mu m square 
mu naught by 3 k. As we can see from the graph between 1 by k versus t, it gives us the straight line. The above equations, that is the equation for capital M and chi para, shows that the induced magnetization is proportional to the applied field and is larger at lower temperature. Same results can also be shown using quantum mechanism. Using quantum mechanics, for any characteristic number, small j, chi para can be expressed as g square small j multiplied by j plus 1 and this whole is multiplied by n mu b square mu naught by 3 kt which is equal to c by t. Now here this mu m can be replaced by mu effective or equal to g multiplied by square root of j multiplied by j plus 1 multiplied by mu b. Here small g is the Landais g factor. This table shows the various paramagnetic materials with their electronic configuration and the theoretical values of g multiplied by square root of j j plus 1 and g multiplied by square root of s s plus 1. The theoretically derived and experimentally values of magnetic moment have also been tabulated for all these rare earth paramagnetic materials. So students, let us summarize what we have learned in this module. First, diamagnetism, which is a fundamental property of all the materials. Second, the diamagnetic behavior is characterized by a small and negative susceptibility and a temperature independent behavior. Third, paramagnetism is present in the elements which have unpaired electrons and follows Hund's rule. Fourth, paramagnetic susceptibility is positive but small in nature due to thermal randomization of magnetic moments. Lastly, the temperature dependence of susceptibility of paramagnetic materials is manifested by Curie's law. Thank you.